Hi and welcome to another frivolous webisode. I come to you in the day after the Oscars, so I went to bed really, really late. I watched the whole ceremony and I woke up really early to go and work and here I am and this is the only day when I have time to record for you so you'll have me like this feeling a bit hangover. What, what, why did it cross my mind that I would be able to deal with this lack of sleep as if I were a teenager? No idea. Today I'm bringing you my disappointing products from 2019, your request, your suggestion. Uh, thank you, keep them coming. And first and foremost, the usual disclaimer, these products did not work for me. That doesn't mean they are bad products overall, I think. It's just they didn't work for me because everything that matters to me is it is I. So <laughs> don't take it too personally. If you love any of these, keep on loving them and I'm happy for you. I'm just a bit jealous. First and foremost, the biggest disappointment in 2019. I can't even deal with this. So, yes, they double cross me. It's the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation. If you've been here for a while, if you watched my, it's been a couple of years now at least, my review and up close and personal video on the original formula, just Synchro Skin. Uh, by Shiseido. You know, I really enjoyed it and it's a very special uh, type of foundation that I've never found anywhere else. Dior Backstage comes close, but it's not exactly the same. It's just so lightweight. It's a light coverage, but it actually covers what I need to see covered. And I only realize how well covered my face is when I go and remove my foundation at the end of the day and I realize, oh, wait, my skin isn't looking that good. It was my foundation doing doing the trick. It looks like actual skin. I love that foundation, so I went and ran as soon as I saw this one uh, and I it was launched close to sale, so I was able to get a good price for this one. And then I got home and this is a thick formula, it has nothing to do with the other formula and I don't care if it says oil free, it gets oily on my face just ap after an hour or so. It's a lot heavier coverage, which I wouldn't mind per se um, if the Synchro Skin had a little bit more coverage to start off with. but. It just looked too heavy on my face and the self-refreshing thing in which it binds on itself and it never creases <laughs> ball it didn't it didn't do that for me it just sunk into my wrinkles and fine lines and it didn't look good anyway if you want to see an up close and personal on any of these products I can always do it for you so don't be afraid to request uh, uh, an up close and personal on this or other foundation or whatever I'm I willingly will suffer for you and show you how it doesn't work on me <laughs> but uh, hey, hey next product again high-end most of the foundations I'm com oh, all the foundations I'm complaining about are high-end this is the Fenty Beauty hydrating foundation yes hydrating longwear foundation of what to say Again, struggled to find my uh, color because it's not sequential in terms of lighter to darkest or darkest to lightest or whatever. It's not sequential. Some shades in the middle are darker or lighter than the others. Really weird. And uh, then when I got home, this is one of those that kind of looks okay when piled on. I'm not one to pile this on. If I use this in a very thin layer, it will look patchy on my skin. It enhances a lot of texture. It kind of dries down, not as in the sense of setting on my skin, but it looks dry on my skin after a while. If I don't powder it, it kind of starts moving around, slipping, slipping and sliding. I touch it, comes off. Um, if I do powder it, it becomes too heavy. So yeah, this is one of those I can mix with other foundations and kind of use it to give a little bit more hydration, although the glow this provides is kind of 
meh. Uh, but yeah, I can use this to mix with other foundations. The, the Synchro Skin, I find, I mix it with anything and it destroys whatever it touches. But this one I can keep on using and trying to use it up by mixing it with other foundations. But yeah, did not work for me and even bigger downside, it has a delicious perfume but still it has perfume. This and the powder, uh, the setting powder, they all smell deliciously of cookies or a sweet dough or something like that but that doesn't fit my face. Next product is the Makeup Forever uh, Reboot Foundation. It was summer, my skin was going, was acting okay, so I decided let's go and try this new foundation from Makeup Forever and it's lightweight, it has kind of that second skin kind of feel. I thought this would be kind of, um, again, a Shiseido Synchro skin, but on the dewy side. And um, I went for it and it didn't work for me. First, this has just enough tint or pigmentation to it where you notice the difference if it's not perfectly color matched to your skin but it doesn't cover anything on my face that really needs coverage and if I try to build it up it starts to look heavy um, if I don't powder it it looks beautiful and satiny and glowy for a while but then it starts it it feels again tacky and and it sticks to my fingers and it's uncomfortable I can feel it on my face and then if I powder it, it immediately immediately goes really heavy and looks cakey and rugged on my face. Um, this one, unlike the Fenty, doesn't cling on as much to the dryness on my skin, but it doesn't disguise it either with kind of a smoothing effect. They say it, it brightens, it's, uh, it smooths. It firms, it hydrates, and it evens out. I would say, out of all of the claims, this will slightly even out already perfect skin. Next is another big disappointment, and again, a lot of money going into these. This is the Too Faced Peach Perfect um, Comfort Matte Foundation. Again, this has a scent that has no place um, in here, and this is too matte for me and I was quite surprised by that and it's one of those that are really matte on my face and then after a while my skin starts to look so shiny and oily nothing can control it. Um, again I can mix this one with other foundations and kind of take advantage of the staying power because it is long wearing and it doesn't look too bad and it doesn't fade too badly on me. Um, it fades with dignity, like I, I like to say, but at the same time, it's a bit too heavy. It provides a good looking skin if you cake it on your face. It's not my kind of thing. Um, and yeah, the, uh, the light layer again looks patchy on the skin and clings on to dryness that you didn't know you had and this one doesn't agree as well with my SPFs and I don't apply ever almost ever foundation on dry or bare skin because I always do my skincare and most of the times I wear foundation to um, go to work so I need to wear found, uh, SPF underneath but yeah um, out of all of these, the one that really lasts a bit longer, the two that last a bit longer are the Fenty and the Peach Perfect ones wearing throughout the whole day and if you have a real life job, you know what I mean, you will struggle with almost all of these. I think if you have kind of the combination mature skin that I do. Next product, uh, this is affordable, this is a Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Under Eye Concealer. Terrible shade range in Portugal. This has that kind of thickness uh, that suddenly just creates cakiness on your eyes, but it doesn't cover, it doesn't create a smooth layer on top of whatever, nor does it fuse with the skin. It just leaves that kind of crackled effect, almost curdled effect on my under eyes, which if you have any sort of texture under your, under your eyes, you don't want that. And for me specifically, I can't use this shade for my um, blemishes because it's too light. So, meh. Again, I struggled so much for this one because it was sold out everywhere 
for so long so I got my hands on it way later and uh, it was a struggle and then I put it on my face and the Too Faced Peach Perfect setting powder, the translucent setting powder, powder makes any foundation I apply on my face look pink. So, and I'm not pink, I'm olive toned. I have golden green, <laughs> so the opposite of pink. And this doesn't balance anything out, it just looks absolutely weird in contrast with my neck or with my chest or whatever. So, although it is quite mattifying, I can apply just get away with applying just a little bit on the sides of my nose, stuff like that. But if I want to powder all over my face, this is going to ruin my look. And I'm so sad because just a couple of months or after the big size were was available everywhere, they came out with the mini, and I would have bought the mini, the travel size, to test it out. And again, the Peach Perfect range is extremely, extremely scented. I don't like the scent on this one <laughs> to make to make matters worse, but there you go. To complain about, I have the L'Oreal Unbeliever Brow. Do you remember Natalie Tran and Community Channel here on YouTube? If you don't, you should check her out. She was hilarious and I miss that her voice a lot um, nowadays. She was great. But anyway, Unbeliever Brow by L'Oreal is a pasty liquid that you apply with the doe foot applicator then they provide uh, a tool with a spoolie on one end and an angled brush on the other end and you're supposed to draw on your brows and then mix them in I find this too heavy I'm not into the pomade kind of brow I don't like them to be too blocky so this doesn't work for me and yeah it's too messy too thick it takes a while to set and can rub off and mess all over your face. Nah, no, no. Next, let's go into two eye palettes that I did not enjoy. This is the NYX Cosmic Metals palette. I mean, this is a classic. I didn't have it. The NYX store was closing, so they have a lot of. They had a lot of sales going on. Yes, there is no NYX store in Lisbon anymore. You just have to find it inside other cosmetic stores, um, but it's not the same as having the full store with all the products. But anyway, I wanted, I really wanted to try this little palette of metallics. They look so pretty when swatched, but then when applied on the eyes, these are, these are chalk city. They're super chalky and they lose their kind of um, shine, they lose that luminosity, the metallicness disappears and it just is a crepey mess and it, on aging eyes <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise. The other one that failed me and I was really sorry about this one, it's the Physicians Formula Sultry Eyes palette. Look at this array of colors, you have neutrals, you have this pop of aubergine and the green which is with a uh, with a black base you have this beautiful blue and you have some seemingly quite shimmery colors the problem is especially this one i mean i rub my finger on it but nothing comes out and when it does it comes in chunks and it feels so again powdery and dry and it sinks into the crevices of your fingers or of your eyes. I tried this in store and it was amazing, super creamy, almost felt, the, the shimmers almost felt like super shock eyeshadows. And then when I got home and I opened mine, I don't know if it's a dud, but it just doesn't work. The mattes are okay, the shimmers are not worth it. Stick to the Colourpop super shock ones. Next we have uh, Lashes. I tried several <laughs> um, mascaras last year and I went back to my trusty caution, uh, caution, yeah, hourglass caution mascara. Sadly, I tried, I tried to find something else, but let's start with the most affordable one. This is the L'Oreal Very Different Unlimited Mascara. This is the waterproof version. 
first and foremost, this is not waterproof, not on my eyes, not on my eyelashes. This smudges on me, which is just meh. Nah. If I wanted it to be non-waterproof, I would buy the original classic formula. And then the applicator, the wand, is a rubber one that pokes my eyes and the formula is super liquidy. It does nothing for my lashes. I was overall completely disappointed on this one. I like the that you can kind of bend the wand, but that's about it and it's not it doesn't justify the price because l'oreal is quite expensive here and i need l'oreal to show receipts you know next product was the biggest disappointment for me because i am a big fan of too faced better than sex and they came out with damn girl mascara uh last year i don't care for the packaging. When you've had the packaging of Better Than Sex, why do you go this route? Just a design rant. Um, but yeah, I was super excited about this one. I saw a couple of YouTubers applying it and I liked the fluffy thick lashes that it seemed to provide. And then I applied it on my eyes and I mean, this is the size of my face, this applicator. It's ridiculous. I can show you our glass caution mascara. Ugh! Starting to get a bit dry. Can we see the difference? Yeah. Um, it's huge. It goes everywhere. It clumps. It clumps my lashes. Uh, it makes them very thick and pasty. The mascara, the formula itself is so thick and pasty, but at the same time, it feels like it never dries down totally. And it kind of clumps all the lashes in three kind of tr thick triangles and um, it smudges. So it's all bad. And better than sex for me is the perfect mascara, apart from the detail that it flakes and smudges after a while. And the waterproof version for me is not waterproof. So the perfect mascara would be better than sex that wouldn't flake and smudge. That's just what they have to improve. If they can make better than sex with a caution formula, sold. It's, it, yeah. But yeah, this was a huge disappointment. Waste of money. Should have waited for the mini and didn't. Now I feel like an idiot. Next one, I got the mini also because this brand, which is Milk, and then Hourglass, Natasha Denona, and a couple of others, they just sell a couple of their products in the travel size, and you have nothing else to choose from, not even online, which is really weird. And Milk is one of those. You can only buy the mini sticks and the, the mini mascara. There's a couple of kits, and that's basically it. We don't have access to the rest of the um, products, but okay, Portuguese Sephora, you do you. I got my hands on the Kush Mascara, again, the type of wand really called out to me. Again, YouTubers apply this, it looked amazing, and it does give you amazing, thick, voluminous, fluttery, fluffy lashes. Problem is, it's not waterproof, it doesn't claim to be, which is nice, it's not waterproof and it smudges all over my face, so... Next one would be overall my recommendation out of all of my fails, which is the Sephora Size Up Mascara. I think this techn technically came out this year, but I mean, I have to talk about it. It is a dud for me. This gives me thick, voluminous, beautiful, better than sex kind of eyelashes. Uh, but it's far more affordable. It's kind of the same wand as Better Than Sex. It's a very similar formula. If you don't have... This one doesn't flake on me. This one smudges a lot. And it doesn't matter if I set my eyes with powder or, or I don't. It doesn't matter. It always smudges. If you don't have any problem with mascara smudging, the imagery, the adverts on this one are true. These, th this mascara makes beautiful thick lashes. It just, it just, 
goes everywhere on my face. Now we're getting close to the end and you know I like a good bargain and this was not a bargain. I mean it was it, super inexpensive but at the same time it was crap. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of disappointments last year regarding lips. Also, I tried to uh, calm down my lipstick purchases because Lisa Eldridge took all my money. But I do love a good bargain and um, I saw these Essence, an Essence uh, display and I had to buy them. These are the Perfect Shine lipsticks from Essence and uh, I was very disappointed because they are called the Perfect Shine and you know the physician's formula butter whatever lipsticks the same from the uh, the butter bronzer range those have a lot of pigment a lot of coverage and they are super juicy and shiny and they have SPF which is an extra also scent but nah. but they are beautiful and that's the kind of thing I was looking for on these ones the physician's formula brand wasn't available here when I bought these and when I apply these onto my lips, it was just, it clings on to the dryness of my lips and it doesn't do any favors for my mouth at all. It just looks thick and crackly and pasted up and there's no way I can use these that flatters my lips, which is annoying to say the least. These were super affordable, that's why I bought three thinking yes this is going to be amazing and then I got home um, and I was so disappointed. In case you're wondering I have mm, one, four and five are the colours that I own. Uh, if these work for you, good. And these are also heavily, heavily fragranced. <sighs> we have to talk about that. Don't be beauty industry. Anyway, these were some of my disappointments in 2019. I hope you have enjoyed this little rant. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed any of these, just, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. We're fine. They just didn't work for me. Let me know in the comments below which were your disappointments. And as usual, if you'd like, please do subscribe and leave me a like and comments and suggestions for next videos. And thank you for spending your time on me, and I'll see you on my next video.